Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and all else, to another episode of Three Random Creepypastas, a show where I go on the Creepypasta wiki, go down to Site Navigation, and Random Story, and find a random story to read. Three of them, in fact. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you so much for the really warm response to the first episode. I was actually blown away by how nice you guys were and how much you enjoyed the new formats. Really happy to hear that. So, I'm back for another episode. With that said, let's begin by reading three random creepypastas. Alright, we have found our first story, which is called My Favorite Tunes, and it even has a picture. Seems like we got a musical or something on our hands. Let's see if it's any good. My name is Jake. I like music. I like music so much I even have it written in black marker on the back of my iPod. That's dedication. One day while I was looking up songs on iTunes for my iPod Touch, I came across an album named My Favorite Tunes in the featured section of iTunes. The cover was just a photo of a dark room with a 15 or 16 year old boy lying on his bed with his eyes closed and with headphones in his ears. I thought it was funny that an album named this would show up in the featured section and decided to buy the album without even checking out the songs in it. It took about 30 minutes to download the entire album, my internet was pretty slow at the time, and during that time I was playing some songs on my guitar. What are these lo-fi beats to study to or something? When it was finished downloading, I hopped onto the couch and started listening to the first song. It was the song Rock Lobster from the B-52s, but it sounded a little... odd. The notes seemed higher in pitch, and in some parts of the song it just sounded like a big mess of random notes. Yeah, that's how you beat copyright on YouTube. I just thought that it wasn't a song, and it was just me since I hadn't listened to Rock Lobster in a while. When the song was finally over, I started to switch to the next song. I glanced at the cover art and thought I recognized the teenager in the cover art. I thought nothing of it and proceeded to the next song. Seems like a bit of unnecessary detail saying that you recognize the teenager and not following it up, but I guess it will come back later in the story. The second song was We Are The Champions, but seemed higher in pitch and had spots with jumbles of notes just like the previous song, but this time it was even more noticeable. Also, I heard someone whisper, Jake, my name, at the end of the song, but just thought it was my imagination. I was a little scared, but still had the courage to listen to the next song. Alright, so we're dealing with quite a few cliches and recurring elements that have appeared in a lot of other creepypastas, but I don't know when this story was written, but right now, I'm not really feeling it that much. This third one's name was Day, and when I listened to it, it was just ambience of a neighborhood or small town alongside a running car engine. It was about 40 seconds long, and when it was over I was confused, but still proceeded to listen to the rest of the songs. The next three songs were Sweet Dreams, Don't Stop Believing, and Breakfast in America, all with the same effects as the first two, and I still thought I heard my name being whispered during the songs. Before I played the second to last song on the album, I looked at the cover art of the album again, and I thought I definitely knew that teenager, but I didn't know who. The second to last song was called Night. The first 20 seconds were nighttime ambience with the sound of someone walking on pavement. After that was the sound of the person who was previously walking now lockpicking a door. After 25 or so seconds the door finally opened and the person now sounded like he, maybe she, was walking up a staircase. When the person got off the stairway he sounded like he was now walking on carpet. While he was walking you could hear him whispering, bathroom, parents room. Laundry room. Here we go. Jake's room. After hearing him, now I knew it was a guy, say that, my heart stopped for a second. I now knew that he wasn't in any random building. He was in my house. I started to reach for the phone to call the police while still listening to the song. I heard him open the door and walk for a bit, then stop suddenly. Say cheese, I heard him say. He then immediately took a picture and then the song was over. I quickly looked at the cover again and realized that the picture was of me, probably taken at the same time as this song was recorded. You didn't recognize that that was you from the beginning? I hesitantly listened to the last song in the album which is named Best Friends. I heard the same guy from the previous song say, Hello Jake, if you try and call the police, which I know you probably will, let's say bad things will happen. 
All I want for us is to become... He pauses for about 10 seconds. Best friends. I put down the phone and, without thinking, deleted the album. I quickly went over to a friend's house, as my parents were gone to pick up my uncles and aunts from the airport. You probably should have established that earlier in the story that they were out, but whatever. And told him about the album. He didn't believe me, and when I tried to re-download the album from the iTunes store, it was gone. He called me a liar and told me to get out of his house. I went home, disappointed and afraid. It has been a couple months since the incident, and I am paranoid almost all the time, especially when I go to sleep. I have had no encounter yet with the person who created the album, except for sometimes this one car seems to slow down whenever they pass by me when I'm walking on the sidewalk, and that recently someone wrote on my iPod under where I wrote, I like music, it says, I like music too, Jake. And that's that's the ending. Yeah, I think you could probably tell I wasn't too crazy about that story. I don't know when this story was written, I'm gonna check the history in a bit, but... As it stands, I wasn't all too crazy about my favorite tunes, I felt it was... I don't know, I felt the writing was unremarkable, I felt the story wasn't all that scary, I mean... I kind of like the idea of, you know, listening to something as a live recording and, you know, this this weird person is, like, stalking you and coming closer to you. I kind of like that idea, but the writing, I feel, just didn't live up to that, in my, in my own opinion. Alright, it seems as though the story was written in 2013, or at least that's when it was posted to the Creepypasta wiki, so... You know, this was still when creepypastas were in their infancy, I guess, or they were just starting to gain traction. So, in that sense, I guess you could excuse this story for not being, like, very original and sort of going through the motions uh, when, you, uh, w when you are reading creepypastas nowadays. So, for the time, I think it would have fared better, you know, back in 2013, but now in 2020... This story is nothing special, I'm afraid, and it has not held up very well. Um, personally, I would give it probably like a 4 out of 10. I would say it was quite below average because, you know, while the writing, in my personal opinion, was fairly weak, I didn't see that many, you know, grammar, overt grammatical errors or anything like that. But personally, I found it to be a little below average. Yeah, that's basically all I have to say about my favorite tunes. Uh, I, ho I, of course, hold no ill will towards the author or anything like that. And I appreciate them for writing it. But this story was, in my opinion, not very good. But in no way do I want the author to stop writing, you know. You improve with every story that you make. And this one... Wasn't, I wasn't too crazy about it, but whatever. Alright, it seems the author of my favorite tunes is known as Greatzilla. They were at least the one who uh, added the story to the creepypasta wiki. So if Greatzilla is indeed the author, thank you for writing it. Please do keep writing and make more stories. Let's move on to the next story and see if it's any better. Alright, we have found story number two, and this one is called The Nightmare Within. We, <laughs> This is the second story with Nightmare in the title. <laughs> Let's see if this story is as good as the one we read in the previous episode. It was a warm summer evening, yet she lay cold and awake in her bed. In the dark, she could just make out the familiar posters of her favorite dreamy actors as the moon shone brightly through the mini blinds, just like it did every night. Everything was calm, and she could hear the sound of her father's deep snoring that she was accustomed to in the next room. Everything seemed normal. However, something had wrenched her from sleep at two in the morning and left her laying unusually cold on that hot season's night. It was the nightmare. Afraid to go back to sleep, she laid awake trying to forget the awful dream. It was something that she had dreamt before. In fact, she had had this dream every night for the past few months. Only it wasn't just something in her head, not even close. It was more like a horror movie, and she was the unfortunate victim. Anytime she awoke, it was like hitting pause. The moment she fell asleep again, her terror would resume, and it would relentlessly pursue her. It kept chasing her throughout the endless maze of a house. In the shadows around her, things moved around just out of her vision. The demon was relentless, never giving up, never tiring. 
Nothing seemed to slow it. Trying to hide never worked either, it found her every time. The wretched creature was a combination of all her worst fears into one. The face was so twisted and hideous, she couldn't even bring herself to think about it. Doing so would be bring on a great deal of terror. She would begin to sweat and tremble with fear. When that happened, it could be hours before she calmed down again. The demon appeared to be a creature that had come out of the darkest pits of hell. Flames danced around endlessly. Anything it came in contact with was instantly singed or turned to ash. Its body was red, not just any red. Blood red. The blood red you see when someone is dying. It was horrifying. The face appeared to be a cross between an ogre and Satan himself. It even emitted a foul odor. It was the smell of death and decay. Eventually she drifted off back to sleep, the demon still lurking behind her thoughts. Sure enough, the moment her eyes closed, she was back in the maze. This time she would attempt to hide. She hoped it would pass her by, and maybe she would finally manage to escape from its clutches. But she knew, in the back of her mind, that it is impossible to hide from evil. Evil is an undying, dark entity. Alright, so far I would say that this story is much better than the previous one. It's a lot more dramatic, and I would say the writing is significantly better. Let's see where it goes. Even though she could not see the demon from her hiding spot, she could sense its presence by the aura of pure evil that it gave off. She could hear it approaching by its distinct footsteps, followed by the sound of dragging metal. This metal scraping on the ground was coming from its blade that seemed so evil that even the flames of hell are not worthy of forging it. She asked herself if she should stay where she is or run. She had no idea if the demon knew her hiding spot. It surely sounded like it was getting closer. To stay there was a death wish, so she ran. Her head pounded with the sound of her own heartbeat. Behind her, she could hear the demon pursuing her as it got ever closer. The demon swung its evil blade, but just missing her, but grazing the back of her neck and hair. She tripped and fell forward down a staircase. Ironically, this stumble probably saved her life as it put her out of reach of the murderous blade. She could feel the blood from her wounds, hot and sticky on her neck. She had to get up. Above her, the demon roared with anger and covered all of these stairs with one gigantic leap. As the demon gained ground on her, it seemed to grow larger in size and become more frightening. Suddenly, she turned the corner and found nowhere else to run. It had finally cornered her after so long. Just as its blade began a downward arc, her ears were filled with a large ringing. She woke with a gasp in her bed as her alarm clock sounded. She took deep breaths to calm herself, telling herself it was just in her head and nothing more. That is, until she put her hand to the back of her neck and it came away sticky with blood. She couldn't focus the rest of the week. Night after night, it was the same thing, and each night, the blade got ever closer. She began to think of how she could get out of this hellish nightmare. Nothing came to mind. Then, one night, the answer became very clear. It was as the demon was chasing her through the kitchen of the house. Utensils were scattered around as the demon ran by a knife. It grazed its arm and roared in pain. Its greenish acidic blood began to flow from the wound. She realized that if it could be harmed, it could be killed. When she woke up to the sound of her alarm again that morning, she noticed her arm was cut and had been bleeding. She spent the rest of the day formulating her plan. She could barely remember the way to the kitchen, but figured if she could get there and arm herself with the knife, she would at least stand a small, finite chance. That night, she laid her head down on her pillow, determined. Slowly, she closed her eyes. Alright, this is it. Time for the final showdown. She was back in the maze. She didn't even wait for the demon to show itself and began to sprint towards the way she thought the kitchen was. She ran through the door, breathless. The girl began to glance around for the knives. Somewhere behind her, the demon's roar could be heard as it tore through objects. Right as it burst through the door, her hand closed around the handle of a knife. She flung it with all her might towards the creature. It raised its arm to protect itself. Unfortunately for it, this was also the arm holding the sword. The knife bit deep into it, the entire blade buried in the arm. 
The sword clattered from its grasp. With sudden energy, the girl rushed forward and scooped it up. She raised it to strike down the demon. As she did so, it looked into her eyes. Then, it uttered one word. Please. She recoiled at the sound of this plea. The voice was far from what she expected to hear from the dark creature. The desperate tone of its voice, like that of a helpless child, did not fit the monstrous demon. With the demon looking pleadingly at her, she suddenly felt a pang of remorse for trying to cause harm to it, but she remembered that if she were in the demon's place, it would not hesitate in executing her. With this justification, she knew that this was it. She could finally end the string of nightmares that had tormented her so long. Despite the demon's cries for mercy, she brought its own blade down to the back of the demon's neck. Determined, she raised it above her head. Blocking out the sounds and sights of desperation in the fiend, let the blade fall and put all of her weight behind it. The demon's hide was thick, so the blade did not cut far into its neck. However, feeling the pain she was inflicting on the evil one only empowered her. One edge of the dark blade was serrated, allowing her to hack into the demon's neck and saw off the ghastly head. The demon did not stop wailing until the head was completely severed from its body, leaving her in absolute silence. The eerie silence is what woke her abruptly from sleep. The nightmare finally once and for all behind her, she went to the bathroom to look in the mirror. The smile was still on her face. There, staring back at her, was the demon. And it was smiling. Okay, okay, that was... That was The Nightmare Within. I... I get the title now. The Nightmare Within was her all along. Ooh. Okay, okay. I would say the story really picked up steam there at the end. I... I would say I like that. In the beginning, I was unsure. I mean, the writing was definitely better than my favorite tunes. Uh, and, and I found the, the, the whole concept of her being hunted down by the demon to be quite oppressive and, and interesting. I would say, you know, more in the middle, I started uh, doubting the story a little bit. But once it came around to that final showdown and the demon at first was very evil, you know, and pursuing her... But then pleading for mercy and, and, and the, uh, the, the protagonist, I mean, quite rightly, you know, not hearing, hearing it, you know, and, and deciding to, to take that step to fight back, to, to behead this demon, and then becoming the demon itself because, you know, revenge can't lead to anything good or anything like that, you know. I don't know, I, I feel the story, like I said, the story definitely picked up steam near the end. And that's when I felt quite disturbed, you know, with the way um, not only that the author was describing uh, the headspace of the of the main character, but also the way it was describing the demon, you know, the demon then pleading, and then how the protagonist was beheading the the demon. I I, I felt the writing there was very strong in making you feel quite disturbed and a little disgusted. Uh, so yeah, I would say I was left with a positive impression by the end, you know. The ending could be seen as cliche, you know, with her becoming the demon, but I liked it personally. I liked it quite a bit. I would give that a 6, leaning on a 7 out of 10. Near the end, it definitely picked up steam and then became something that I was quite disturbed with and and did enjoy. So all in all, I would say that was a solid story. It probably would give it like a 6 to a 7 out of 10. It was definitely above average, and that's basically that. Oh, and one final thing. It seems that the story was written by an author known as Cat Jack Who. Thank you, Captain Jack Who, for writing it. I did enjoy it, and I think you did a pretty good job. Let's move on to our third and final story. Let's see what we find. Alright, our third and final story is known as Down in the Beast. And it was apparently written by an author known as... Teth and Klau. I don't know if that's the right way to say your name, but... Ah well, let's start reading the third and final story, Down in the Beast. I am young again. 
This is how my dream always begins, with me standing at the church picnic so many years ago. Not my own pleasantly bland Presbyterian church in the suburbs of Charleston, but that austere Lutheran church out in the plains of West Texas where my father's family has lived for well over two centuries. The dusty church surrounded on all sides by the blue skies and faded grass already turning shades of ochre brown under the relentless assault of the summer sun. The large chapel filled with rough wooden pews that I peacefully slept in for most of the services before being awoken by my uncle to hear the word of God from the preacher. I too am fading under the same sun. My six-year-old self is too young to understand why we have to stand out here after an unfamiliar church service by an unfamiliar preacher. Angrier than the ones back home and consumed with the fury of a man who tries to combat evil in the world but acknowledges that he can barely contain his own base instincts. Except now he stands by the grill cooking burgers in a faded Panama hat and Aggie's polo shirt, smiling at some unheard joke. There is still a faint glimmer of madness in his eyes that comes through each time a bit of animal fat drips down onto the fire. All this I witness while slowly drifting towards the chapel itself, past the rusting playground and the fading symmetry of bleak, grey headstones proclaiming who was a father, mother, brother, killer. This is the dream as it happens, my slow walk to the chapel door and how effortlessly it opens for me despite my small size. Inside, all is dark and still. The light coming from the dirt smeared stained glass window is enough to illuminate everything except the altar which remains shrouded from my sight. Except, I have to see it. I'm compelled to walk forward by whatever fuels this dream. This is urging to behold what should be a simple protestant altar of wood and wire instructs me to take the final few steps forward. There it is. Rising out of the dim shadows, I fully see my destination. Not that simple platform rose a few inches above the floor or plain wooden podium, but the figure of Christ and passion on the cross raised behind it. The details of his face carved upon my memory as my six-year-old self beheld the throes of pain etched on his face and contemplated the words carved above him. Be sure your sin will find you out. Light floods into the chapel as the door opens behind me to reveal the silhouette of a man. No, just a shadow, an indistinct shape growing more sinister as it approaches. He begins to whisper something. The whisper grows to a roar, the roar of bells from the tower above. I awake. The sounds of tolling church bells are now in the distance, but a muted whisper still echoes through from the realm of nightmare. You'll find me down in the beast. We'll be waiting. Huh. Okay, of, of, of the three stories, that was definitely my favorite because the writing was very strong and very, uh, I want to say abstract. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but as, an, as, as a non-native English speaker, it's, it's a little difficult to wrap my head around. I definitely enjoyed it because the, the writing was very... I would say it was very strong and yeah, like I said, I'm having a very hard time... Um, wrapping my head around it, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, religious imagery and symbolism, uh, that contributed to making quite the, quite the interesting and, I want to say, cerebral story. I did enjoy that quite a bit. Uh, I found it to be almost mesmerizing in the way the author was describing this nightmare. I can't say I fully understand it as of now, uh, maybe you have your own interpretation, which you can share in the comments below. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. I enjoyed Down in the Beast. Uh, I enjoyed the imagery it painted up. Uh, the writing style was very uh, strong and, like I said, mesmerizing, rather hypnotic. I will say the author did a really good job at, at uh, pulling me into this story that they were they were telling me about this nightmare. If I had to put a number on it, probably a 7 to an 8 out of 10. I found myself being very, very intrigued by the story, and I felt it did not outstay its welcome. 
uh, yeah, all in all, pretty strong story. And that's that! Those were three random creepypastas. I certainly hope you enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed reading them. Thanks again for the amazing support that you guys have been showing me so far. I very much appreciate it, and that should basically be that. Thanks for watching, everyone. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and comment your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Otherwise, you can check out my social medias or my Patreon page if you're feeling generous. Thanks for watching, and once again, stay safe, everyone. We will get through this together. Stay awesome, everyone. Good bye.